everybody and welcome back to the girly girl bookworm so today i am going to be doing a books that i've read so far in july wrap up video thing um i was in disney from july 1st to the 9th today is the 13th um i was going to do a end of the week wrap up but then i was like like a vacation wrap up but then i was like then i carried books on like from there and then that I was going to do a weekly wrap-up thing, and then I was like, you know what, with the book Tupathon coming up, I better just add my weekend news into this as well, so that's what I'm just going to do. So this is the books that I've read from July 1st to July 13th, because I just finished one today, so that should be fun. So the first book that I've read this month was The Husband's Secret by Leanne Moriarty. I can never say her name whatsoever. This is an adult book. There it follows three separate women, even though it all revolves around one woman. She um, is married, she's got three daughters, and one day while her husband's away on business, she's upstairs in the attic doing something, and she finds a letter to her, and it says, in her husband's handwriting, like, to open, like, if you're reading this, like, I'm dead. Like, so, like, it's a letter that he wrote to tell her a secret, after he's dead but the thing is he's not dead yet and that just sparks a whole ton of drama and it involves the other two women and I gave this book four stars I really enjoyed it um I there really isn't too much to say elsewise I really liked it I would continue reading different books by her I know there's one Big Little Lies or something like that that sounds really good I can't that's not what it's called I thought there was a picture of it in the back. Yep. Not a picture, but it's Big Little Lies. And that comes out, I think, sometime this year. So I'm excited to get to that as well. Really good. That's all I'm going to say. Um, the next book that I read was Why We Broke Up by Daniel Handler. And art was by Mar Mariah. Maria? No. Talman. <laughs> and this is a YA book about... A girl and she and her boyfriend have broken up and she leaves a big box of stuff and a letter for him to find and it really like explains like why they broke up and it goes object by object so each section starts with a picture of the object that she's leaving him I mean it was unique but I didn't love it I gave this book three stars wasn't really crazy about it the writing style took like, some getting used to. I still don't really fully understand it. Like, the ending just didn't feel like an ending. Like, I didn't really understand it. And then I found out, too, after, like, while I started it, Daniel Handler actually wrote the series of Unfortunate Events, and I, like, despise those books. I read them last year and this year, and I really did not like a single, like, 13 one of those 13 books. I think I, I like the first one, and then the rest, I just were downhill. So I think that's probably two why I didn't like this book, but I just didn't. Um, I could kind of see why people would like it. I just, I don't know, it was hard to get used to the writing. Like, I would read something, and then I'd go on, and then I'd feel like I missed something, and I'd have to go back and reread it, and I really don't like when I have to do that. So I like to understand it right from the beginning. So unfortunately, I wasn't a fan. And then I read Kingdom, um, Disney After Dark, which is book one in the Kingdom Keepers series by Ridley Pearson. I gave this one four stars, I want to say, like three and a half, four. Is that what I gave it? I think so. This is about five kids. They're teenagers, and they are like holograms, like they're hosts at Disney World. And one night, like, they go, like, one of the main characters, Flynn, no, Finn, Finn, he wakes up in Magic Kingdom at night, and this man is like, you need to find the rest of the five, like, of you that are these hosts, something is going wrong, there's evil lurking, and you need to solve the problem to save Walt Disney World. And I liked it, but I just couldn't picture this being a kid's book, 
Um, it was just kind of confusing at parts that, like, I felt like would go over kids' heads. And then I feel like I would have enjoyed it so much better if, like, the hologram host things weren't a thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you probably know what I'm saying. If you read this, maybe you'd understand. But, like, the whole hologram thing I felt like didn't really add to the story at all to me. It just made it more confusing. I did like it. I will continue on probably with the second book to see what happens there. Like, I didn't hate it, just things I could picture, like, being a kid reading it, not understanding it, so I wasn't 100% crazy about it. Then I read I Hunt Killers by Barry Liga, Liga, something. This book was really interesting. I gave this, I believe... Four stars? I want to say four stars. Um, this is about a boy named Jazz, and he is the son of an infamous um, serial killer. And um, in his town, deaths start happening, and he feels like it's his job to try to help solve these murders. Because in the beginning, he really believes it's a serial killer, and because he was raised with a serial killer, he feels that like he could figure it out because he could see it from a criminal standpoint and the entire time as well he's struggling because people always figure he's the son of a serial killer he's going to become a serial killer so he is kind of in this constant like fight with himself over am I going to be a killer or am I not going to be a killer this is the first book in a trilogy so I'm excited to get on to the rest of the series the one problem that I wrote in my in my Goodreads review of, that I had a problem with was the conflict, like I said, that he has with himself. He has so much drama within, within himself that, like, it's totally not even necessary. His girlfriend, Connie, finally, like, yells at him, and I was like, yes, thank you, because it was just insane. Like, the fighting with himself, I'm like, you have to believe you're a good person if that's what you want to be. If you want to be a good person, you have to believe it. Stop fighting yourself constantly. And I also love the sub-characters, Connie, and then his friend, um, I'm going to blank on his friend. Mm, Howie, I really liked Howie, too. Um, so I did like the side characters as well, so I did like this, and I will continue on with the series at some point. I think the third book comes out in September, September 9th, I want to say, too, if you're interested. And then the last book that I read, which is the one that I just finished today, was The Testing by Joelle Charbonneau. This is also a first book in a trilogy. Finished trilogies and then I just start new ones, which is a mess. But I really liked this book. I gave this book four stars. I was, this book is like they say, like if you like Hunger Games, you're going to like this book. It's about a girl. She has chosen to go into this thing called The Testing, which like only, there's like, there's been like, this, like, full-out war, I forgot what they call it, it's the Seven Stages War, and it's pretty much wiped out the world, so there's all these, like, colonies, and in order to create these good leaders, they pick certain people from, like, the classes to go into these testings, and people go through it, and if you pass the testing, you get to go on to university. And our main character, Sia, has been chosen to go into the testing, and right before, she's pretty excited that she wanted to be chosen so bad. And before she leaves, her father tells her, like, don't trust anyone. And it changes everything, and the testing is just insane. And things obviously go wrong because Hello is a dystopian. And I really liked it. Like, I was really nervous going into this book because every review I'd seen of it was like, oh, it wasn't that good, three stars. Like, they really weren't fans of it. And, for, and they were like, it's literally like The Hunger Games all over again. But I didn't feel that way. But then again, I haven't read The Hunger Games in like, I don't even know where they are right now. In like two years maybe. I read it right before the first movie came out. So like, I wasn't directly like comparing it. I wasn't like, oh my gosh, this is totally like when Katniss did it. No. I just read it for what it was. And for me, I enjoyed it. I wasn't, like people were saying, well, it's enjoyable. But it wasn't really like in depth of whatever. And I was like. If it's entertaining, that gets me a good star. So I'm going to give it a four star. I'm interested, obviously, in continuing the series at some point with Independent Study and Graduation Day. Because I feel like that one 
just came out too, so I can't wait to get to the rest of these as well. So I read a good mixture of books this week, this month so far. With the Booktubeathon coming on, I will be having, hopefully, fingers crossed, daily updates of me doing good. So that should be coming up soon. And I hope you guys have been reading some amazing books, as always. I feel like I'm always saying that, but I really hope you are. Um, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, everyone.